Sophia from Big Dream Crochet, and today I'm going to show you how to make my knitting machine pumpkins. So these pumpkins are really easy and super simple to make. I mean, look at how cute they are. This is definitely a tutorial that you want to have for this upcoming fall season. I'm thinking that this project is perfect for markets, which is what I'm planning to use this tutorial for, because these pumpkins whip up in like 30 minutes ish at least for me so it shouldn't be too much longer for you but i think that these pumpkins are perfect for markets or maybe making holiday gifts for family or just gifts for yourself i mean these pumpkins are such cute home decor like i can imagine them just placed all around the house and you can make all sorts of different colors to make really whatever kind of pumpkin you want. But I'm going to show you how to make this basic pumpkin right here. So just to give you a background on these pumpkins, the body is made from the knitting machine. You just make a tube, uh, which I'll show you how to do. And then the stem here, this part is actually crocheted. It's just a couple rounds um, of a spiral. Uh, you just sew it on top afterwards. So. I'll go ahead and show you everything that you need for this project and we'll go ahead and get started. But before we do, make sure that you like this video if you are excited to make some pumpkins and subscribe too. I'll be sharing all kinds of uh, crochet tutorials and market content and just crochet content in general. So if you are a crocheter, then this channel is for you. Let's be friends. So hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. So that way you don't miss my next video because I don't know what I'm going to post after I post these pumpkins. It'll be a surprise. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and get started now. And one more thing, my apologies if I sound a little nasally or out of breath. I spent the last like week and a half being very sick with some kind of virus. I don't know. And I'm still kind of recovering from that. So just bear with me and I will try and be as clear as possible and Try not to cough on camera, but I will probably edit them out if I do. So anyways, I just wanted you to know, I guess. So in terms of what you need to make these pumpkins, first you are going to need some orange yarn. Now your pumpkin doesn't have to be orange. It can be a different fun fall color or something else completely, but you really don't need that much yarn. I think that this project is a great scrap buster project. So if you have you know, just some yarn in the bottom of your yarn stash that you haven't used in a while or just don't have like a lot of, I think it'd be perfect for a pumpkin. Um, these pumpkins only weigh 40 grams after like, after they're all finished with, with all the stuffing and uh, the stem sewn on top, uh, they only weigh 40 grams. So you definitely need less than 40 grams of yarn for your pumpkin. And yeah, at least that's how much it is for me. And this is, this is the kind of pumpkin my knitting machine makes. And According to how much I stuff it to, I don't put a lot of stuffing in there. You need less than 40 grams of yarn for your pumpkin body. So there's that. And then for your stem, you just need a little bit of scrap yarn for your stem. So if you have leftover brown yarn, perfect, or whatever color of stem that you want. I just use brown because I like a classic traditional pumpkin. You will also need a 5 millimeter crochet hook and I know I'm gonna get a ton of comments saying what is on your hook I know it looks pretty funky but this is actually my chunky boy crochet hook handle so it just makes it ergonomic and I have like no hand pain now when I crochet with this hook on the on uh this hook on my hand uh the handle on my hook yeah definitely check them out I'll link this in the description I wish I had an affiliate link for you but I don't. I don't think that's possible because they are a small business, but you should definitely go support them. They're awesome and I love mine so much. I've been using it for over a year now and it's perfect. Next up, you're going to need some darning needles to sew the pumpkin together. Scissors, of course, for cutting the yarn and making sure that you can bind off. You absolutely will need some measuring tape here because that is how we're going to make sure that your pumpkin body is the right size while it's still on the knitting machine. So my knitting machine does not have a row counter and I rely solely on measuring how, how long my project is while it's on the knitting machine. So that is what I'll be doing and that's honestly a good way to keep track of sizing on your knitting machine anyways because all of our knitting machines are going to be different so if I used a row number it might not be the same uh like 
size as you know the same kind the same amount of rows on your knitting machine so we are going to be using measurements uh for the sake of preciseness and clarity so get a measuring tape and then of course you'll need some stuffing you don't need a lot of stuffing actually the goal of these pumpkins is to not stuff them a lot so that the knit stitches don't stretch through and you can see i dealt with that problem a lot when i was designing this pumpkin um so you don't need a lot i mean i would probably use more than this but i just didn't want to bring my whole box of polyfill over here yep make sure you have some kind of stuffing uh to stuff your pumpkins and of course you need a vending machine which i totally forgot to go grab mine let me show you okay so this is my knitting machine it is the loops and thread knit quick so it's from michael's and i really like it honestly if you look up this machine online it has like the most awful reviews ever <laughs> but i have never had any problems with it i feel like a lot of knitting machine like bad reviews uh come from user error because knitting machines you do have to be very precise with them and you do have to work them perfectly to get a good result yeah i <laughs> i just felt like those those reviews that i have seen and that i know you will see if you search at the sitting machine are mainly from user error like not using the right weight of yarn or something like that that's usually what it is is if your knitting machine is dropping stitches it means that the yarn is uh either too small or too big so you gotta find the perfect perfect weight for your knitting machine and i've been able to do that with this one and it works great i really like it but yes you will need a knitting machine i'm gonna go ahead and set mine up and then we'll get started on making the pumpkin body this is going to be a super quick tutorial i think there's really not much that goes to it so i'm excited let's go ahead and set up our knitting machines and i'll show you how to get started Okay, so I kind of have you angled a little weird because that's just what I can do with my desk. Um, but anyways, okay, here's my knitting machine. It's all set up. Now, I think my knitting machine is about 40 pins or 41 pins. It's like, it doesn't say anywhere on the thing. And I do remember I had to count each one of them uh, to get that information. So I believe it is 40 pins. But anyways, that doesn't really matter. Uh, 40 pins makes this size of pumpkin. So if your machine is bigger or smaller you will have a bigger or smaller pumpkin but that's really not that big of a deal uh just make sure that your knitting machine is set on the tube setting because we will be making a tube and okay now i'm assuming that you kind of already know how to work your knitting machine if you're watching this tutorial i'm going to show you how i set up my knitting machine it will probably be very similar since they're pretty much all the same thing you're just going to cast on a tube like you normally would uh using your knitting machine so make sure you start with the uh little black hook the one the starting hook right here mine is right here and i just put it to the right of the little thread holder thing okay and then i'm just taking some and I'm casting on as normally, just weaving the yarn back and forth through the pins. So just cast on as you normally do with your knitting machine. Just make sure it is on the tube setting. Once you make it all around, um, so my knitting machine, let me see if I can show you properly, whoops, has this little tension guide right here. If your knitting machine has this, you definitely want to use it. You want to put your thread in the smallest tension as possible because we want these stitches to be tight so that they don't um, stretch open and you can see the stuffing on the inside. Now, if you don't have one of these tension guides, uh, I think you have to hold your yarn tight uh, as you spin it. You will have to like hold it somehow right here now I don't really know exactly how that goes because mine does have the tension guide but the tension of the stitches does need to be tight so you will need to pull down on it but if you have the tension guide yeah just leave it in the tightest tension that you can get so this is about it now we're just going to start winding on the machine mine is a little noisy and especially because of the tight tension it makes the pins click but 
that's okay. It's gonna continue making a tube until you have six inches. That's why I wanted you to have the measuring tape is because we're going to make a tube until it is six inches long measuring from the inside down to down to six inches. So just go ahead, make your tube. Don't drop any stitches and measure it and stop when you get to six inches. Okay, so now that we have completed some rows on here, uh, I'm gonna show you how to measure. So this is how I like to measure. I like to uncurl the bottom of the panel, or the, the tube that I'm knitting, I mean. And then I'm just going to like hold it like this, stretch it out to the middle. And wherever the little teeth of the pin are, that is about how long the panel is. So right now I'm measuring at like about four and a half inches. So we need to get to six inches. So not too many more rows. Make sure that you measure yours the same way. So that way you know that you have six inches of a tube. So because I have about an inch and a half more to go, I'm gonna keep on making a tube. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I have reached the six inch measurement by now. So I'm just gonna go ahead, measure again, uncurl the bottom, line up this with the bottom. Yep, I am at about six. So I'm gonna go ahead and spin my uh, knitting machine until I fly, until I find the black uh, pin. So that way the next row that I do will be my casting off. Oh, there it is, it wasn't too far away. So now that I have found the black pin, I'm gonna make sure that it goes through the last hook. Now this is just how I bind off. Um, once you read the once you reach the six inches, remember finish the round that you're on and then find your starting pin again. So that way the next row you do, you can cast off. So however you normally do it, do it that way because all of our knitting machines might be a little bit different. I'm just going to go ahead and cast off. I'm gonna put that in the center and let all the pins click. And make sure you don't drop a stitch right now because that would be awful considering that your pumpkin is almost done. Okay, so now that you have cast all the stitches off, now this is how we do it on my machine. I just take the thread that I cut off and I'm gonna go around and loop it, uh, loop it through each one of these loops on the pin so that way they'll all be sitting on this thread. So go ahead and do that. Continue to cast off whichever way you normally cast off. Okay, so I have now cast off my tube. This is what it looks like so far. This is what yours should also look like. See how tight those stitches are? I guess it might be a little bit hard to see, but they're very tight and that is perfect because we don't want any of the stuffing um, on the inside to be seen or poke out through the stitches. So this is perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put away my knitting machine because we are all done with that. And I'll show you how to make the pumpkin body have its pumpkin bumps. <laughs> okay, so now that we have the pumpkin body done, you should still have like a darning needle on the thread that you cast it off with. Perfect, go ahead and pull that closed. And make sure, you see how it's like bunching up right here? Make sure that as you're twisting it, that the panel is like tucked on the inside if that makes sense like you don't want a bunch of it to stick out from the inside you want it all to be on the inside so you have a smooth clean uh opening right there so just go ahead pull it shut okay and i'm gonna try and pull mine shut even more being sure that you are just so careful pulling this don't break the yarn I've done that so many times and then your pumpkin becomes unraveled from the bottom it is just awful Okay, 
So this little hole right here, this is the bottom of our pumpkin. So now let's go ahead and stuff the inside. Okay, and make sure while you are stuffing the pumpkin that you spread the stuffing out like to the sides. Like the pumpkin, we want the pumpkin to be wide on the bottom, not really tall. And hey, this is also looks like a witch's cauldron, so bonus um <laughs> design from this tutorial. I'm gonna put in just a little bit more to kind of fill the inside this gap right here. Now we don't want our pumpkin to be overstuffed to the point where you can like see the stuffing through the gaps. We want it to be stuffed just enough to be like full, but the stitches don't stretch. So, okay. So for me, I think this stuffing looks pretty good. Um, now we're going to find the string that's connected to the top part of the tube and we're going to pull that so it tightens up too. And again, make sure that, you know, it's not folded or twisted a weird way as you are pulling it. You want to make sure that you have like a clean edge just like that. So go ahead and pull it tight. Okay, perfect. So whoops, my darning needle is still on the bottom thread. Make sure that's tight. Okay. And now, now that we have the top closed as well, we're going to take the thread that we used to pull that shut and put it on a darning needle. And then you're going to make sure you pull this tight. This is the last time we really get to mess around with this hole. Now you're going to stick it through the hole this part to the other side. So find the other hole. There you go. And now you're going to pull it through. Okay. So now when I pull on the thread that we move to the bottom, the top will go down so we can make the pumpkin bumps now. So now that we have moved it to the bottom, make sure that you pull the pumpkin tight. So I like to have my like hand on the bottom of the pumpkin so I can, you know, hold it with the thread. Make sure you squish it. You want this part to go down. See how it squishes down? Okay, so you're gonna pull this tight. And now we're gonna make the pumpkin bumps. Basically what we're going to do is take the yarn from the bottom here and we're going to loop it over the top and back into the center. We're going to put the darning needle back through and pull it again down to the bottom. All right, and so now the yarn has looped from the bottom of the pumpkin back to the top and we're pulling it down again. And you want to make sure that the yarn is like going in a straight line with the stitches. So see how, um, let's see, I can do this one. See how I've, I'm kind of like lining it up in between the lines of those stitches. So now like you can't really see it now, but it's in, it's in there. See that? So now we're just going to pull it tight and see how it's like pulled the pumpkin in to make a bit of a bump right here. There we go, that's how, that's how we make the pumpkin bumps. Okay, so we've got one and if, if you notice on the top, like when you pull it tight, that it gets a little wrinkly or just like weird looking there. Um, just try and like fluff it back up. <laughs> we'll see, but that's okay if your pumpkin is a little wrinkly. I mean, pumpkins look a little weird anyway, so. Okay, so there is one pumpkin bump. Now we're going to put four bumps onto this pumpkin. So basically we're going to make like a cross shape right here. So I'm going to mirror this side, the side that we just did on this side now. So back down at the bottom, pull it back up, mirroring the other side, and then take your darning needle 
stick it through, find the bottom hole, and pull it through there. Okay, and then you can make sure that the line, well, that the yarn is lined up with the stitches so it finishes a little nicer. Okay, pull it tight. There we go. Now, see, our pumpkin has two bumps on it, and now we're going to go this way. See how my pumpkin has like a weird, there's like a weird indent right there. I'm just going to try and pull it up so that way it's not too noticeable. So now we have four pumpkin bumps. Perfect. Um, this is what your pumpkin should look like. So now that we have all the strings oops, down at the bottom, well, both of the yarn strings down at the bottom, I'm taking my darning needle off because we don't need it. At least not right now. We'll have to put it back on later. But So you want to pull, pull both of the uh, threads down here. So pull them both tight so you can make sure that your pumpkin bumps will stay tight and also this bottom hole right here will stay tight and now you're just going to tie them together uh, to secure it so this is how I do it nothing fancy just a simple little knot so you just tie it like that tie it down and then tie it again there we go okay so now that they've been knotted I'm going to take my darning needle again and attach it to the yarn and then to weave in my ends I'm just going to poke it back through the general area where the bottom hole is and then just like out the sides of one of the pumpkins or one of the pumpkin bumps and just pull it there we go and then I'm just gonna cut it um right there so that the end will be inside the pumpkin. Okay, now I'm just gonna go ahead and do that for the other thread too. Cut it off at the edge, pumpkin up. Okay, there you go. Now you have a pumpkin body, you did it. So I like to determine which side is gonna be the top and the bottom just by looking at like, how it looks. Um, I think this will probably be my top because it looks a lot smoother than this side. See how this side's a little more like rumpled and stuff like that. So this is going to be the bottom and this is going to be th the top. So I'll put the stem here on this side. So your pumpkin body is done. Uh, just go ahead and set this to the side and we'll go ahead and make our stem now. Okay, so to make the stem, take your stem colored yarn, your five millimeter hook, and now we're going to make a magic circle. So this is how I do it. Um, make your magic circle however you usually make it. There we go, magic circle. And now you're going to put eight single crochets in your magic circle. Now that I have eight magic, I mean, eight single crochets in my magic circle, go ahead, pull the magic circle shut. We're going to work in a continuous spiral. You're just going to go into the next stitch right here, and you're going to place a single crochet. All right, and then just place a single crochet in the rest of the stitches in this round. Now you might notice I am not working with a stitch marker and that is because that you do not need to be very accurate <laughs> on this stem. You really just need to get the shape and you can get the shape uh, just by having the magic circle and single crocheting. We're going to just continue single crocheting until we've reached the proper length for however long you want your stem to be. So here's an example. Uh, this is how long my stem is. I think it's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rows long, but 
this is just how I like the stem. If you want to make a stem that is shorter or longer than that, go for it. The stem is really up to you. It does not need to be exact. I mean, you just really have to get the shape right, you know. Uh, stitches, um, like number of stitches or rows doesn't really matter, just as long as you have the shape right and you like the stem for your pumpkin. Go ahead and place single crochets in every stitch in the round until you have reached your desired stem length and then I'll show you how to do the last round. Okay, so I think I am getting close to making the stem the right length uh, that I want it to be. So you can always test out um, the stem on the pumpkin. So I'm just gonna place it on top and see what it looks like with it on. Yeah, I definitely want mine to be a couple more rows higher just so it's not so stubby on the pumpkin, but um, do whatever you would like. I'm just showing you how to, you know, kind of test it and see just how long you want your stem to be. Okay, so I think I've reached the right length for my pumpkin and it looks like it. This is how I like my stems. So if you feel like you have reached the right length for your stem, we're going to go ahead and do one more row. For the last round, you're going to increase in every stitch. So we're just going to increase. Oops. So this will make the base of the stem a little bit thicker, which is usually how it is on real life pumpkins. So well, that's what we're going to do for our pumpkin. So just increase in every stitch in the round. And then I'll show you how to fasten off. Now, if you have lost track of the start of your round, that's totally okay. I haven't been keeping track either. You just want to increase until you reach the spot where you started increasing again. Like I said, it doesn't really matter. Uh, technical rows and numbers and things like that for the stem because it's just a pumpkin stem. I reached the stitch where I started increasing, so I'm at the end of my round. And now what we're going to do is slip stitch into the next stitch right here. All right, and then we're going to take our scissors. I'm gonna go ahead, leave yourself a bit of a tail so you can use this tail to sew the stem onto the pumpkin body. And then cut, perfect. And then I'm just going to pull the tail through with my crochet hook. There we go. Okay, and then pull this tight. There we go. Okay, so we do want to stuff the stem a little bit. So, you know, you can actually grab onto it and it's not just an empty little tube that is holding the, the end that has the magic circle that is in there as stuffing. And then I like to take the threads that we cut earlier that were from the pumpkin potty, like the, the tail ends there, I like to take those and just put them in there. Because usually they're pretty long since they were on the knitting machine and they give like just enough stuffing, like, you know, just enough body to the stem. It's where I don't have to use any of my polyfill for the stem. And that's great because I like to only use my polyfill when I need to. And you might be able to see some orange through the stitches it's a pumpkin. There's going to be orange. I don't know. I, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, but you know, if you don't want to see the orange through, that's totally okay. You can use more brown yarn or use polyfill. Really, it's up to you. This is your pumpkin. Okay, so now we are going to start sewing the stem on top of the pumpkin. So take your darning needle, attach it to the end of the thread for the stem. All right, and since the thread is already attached to the stem, I'm just gonna pick a spot oh, on the middle. This is probably my least favorite part of the pumpkins just because I don't like sewing, but you know, this is definitely an easy pumpkin to make. So if I have to do a little bit of sewing, that's okay. Okay, so you basically just wanna sew it around the very middle of the pumpkin. So you place your stem there, you kind of get an idea of where you should sew around. Like you should sew the stitches in through there. So I'll go ahead and show you. So I'm just going to take my darning needle, put it through like a loop or stitch 
and pull the yarn boom okay so that is how it is going to go all right so now that we th we put the thread through the pumpkin we just put the thread back through the stem now i like to uh, i will sew down every other stitch of the stem i honestly you you can thread down uh you can sew down each stitch that is on here but i just feel like you don't need to do that because if you thread every if you sew down every other stitch then the stem will be secure enough to where it's not going to fall off and it's not going to make any holes and i would rather you sew as little as possible for this pumpkin because i know that you know sewing isn't everyone's favorite thing to do so try sewing down every other stitch. That's what I've done and none of my pumpkin stems have come off for anything like that. They've been super sturdy. Okay, so now I'm just going to put, uh, sew that stitch down right next to where I sewed down the other stitch. And you're just going to do that all the way around the pumpkin. Try and keep it, you know, in the middle where the stem sits normally. But just make sure that you pull you pull it tight in that uh, you get ev at least every other stitch down. Okay, so I have finished sewing my pumpkin stem on. Now what we're going to do is just make a little knot. I just am going to like thread my um, yarn through like a little loop very close to where I finished and I'm just going to put a little knot right there so however you usually fasten off your yarn go ahead and do that all right I've made my little knot so this yarn is fastened off and we're just gonna kind of like try and put it through the center of the pumpkin again and out the bottom there we go take your scissors and cut the end there we go so now the end should be inside the pumpkin you have your pumpkin stem on and you finished there we go pretty simple process for such a cute pumpkin well, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed making your knitting machine pumpkin and that you have plans to make so many more of these. I only designed this pattern like a week or two ago and I already have 10 pumpkins made and I made all of them in like one day. So you can make tons of these pumpkins. Like I said before, I think they would be great to sell at markets. That's what I am planning to sell them at. So yeah, I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, if you do make some of these knitting machine pumpkins, definitely post a picture on Instagram or you can message me on Instagram. I would love to see what you make. Um, my Instagram is at Big Dream Crochet. Um, definitely go follow me there. I update my stories at least once a day. Uh, that's what I try to do. And then I also post other content on there uh, weekly as well. But anyways, don't forget to subscribe, like this video if you liked this video and I will see you next time I upload, which will hopefully be next week. Okay.